Okay, so we've spent uh, quite a few videos looking at, at how to uh, draw out in a, on a flat piece of paper three-dimensional structures. And what we're going to have to do now as we move forward is we're going to have to consider the, uh, the implications of those three-dimensional structures in terms of reactions. I'm going to start off with something very simple here, and that is the reaction of uh, some kind of nucleophile on a ketone uh, on a cyclohexane ring. Uh, and the important thing here is what, whatever this nucleophile is, when it adds to the carbonyl group, the ketone, uh, we're going to get this type of product over here. Right? So O minus initially, when we work this up with water, it'll end up being an, o, an OH. The key thing here is that we're actually forming a new stereogenic center. It's not a chiral center because uh, or center of chirality because we're not making uh, enantiomers, but it's a stereogenic center. And the nucleophile could either be facing up or it could be facing down. And, and the question is actually going to be about um, which way is it. And, and there's a very simple answer to this. The very simple answer is that when the nucleophile is a big molecule, then it will want to be in the equatorial position. If the nucleophile is small, it will want to be in the axial position. Uh, so if we had to draw out just the chair structure of this uh, compound, we would get something uh, like that. Sorry, that's quite light. Let's fill that in. All right, so this is the chair. Everything is roughly parallel to each other. Uh, the isopropyl group is over here and it is facing equatorial up. And the ketone is over here. Note it's actually an SP2 center, so it's not coming down in equatorial or axial position. Uh, it's, it needs to be sort of facing out like that. Um, and so the nucleophile has two options. It's either coming in from the top like that, or it's coming in from the bottom uh, uh, like that. Um, we don't have to show this. Uh, all we need to know is that whether the nucleophile, if the nucleophile is big, it needs to end up in such a way that it would be in an equatorial position. Um, as an example for this structure over here, uh, we know that the isopropyl group wants to be equatorial, so we'll fix it in an equatorial position, so we know that it's equatorial. If we move around the ring over here, we'll find out at this position over here, equatorial up, equatorial down, equatorial up, equatorial down. Um, and that means if the nucleophile is big, right, so in this case we're choosing a big nucleophile, then the nucleophile will be facing down like that. Um, and the O, which will become an OH, is obviously then going to be facing up and will be in an axial position. Um, an example of this would be the reduction of the ketone using a small reducing agent, such as sodium borohydride. So let's do the same thing. If we are to use sodium borohydride here, uh, it is a small reducing agent, and because of that, um, the H will prefer to be in an axial position, and so the OH is going to end up being equatorial, which will be down. Can you follow that? So the hydride, this is equivalently equivalent of delivering an H minus. All right, very small reducing agent, very small nucleophile, we could think of it as. So when it adds over here, it's because it is small, it's going to be in an axial position, and the OH it forms is in an equatorial position. So we know that this one wants to be equatorial. That's governing, that's controlling the reduction that's occurring and the, the stereochemistry of the product, and so we end up with that.